Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, that's it, man. Just overgrown kids. Out having fun, playing with our toys. He's got a really big toy. He's got his uh, overgrown train set. We've got our, our little toy motorcycles. Good. Well, good morning to you all. It is uh, Sunday. I'm not sure what day. 25th. I can't keep track anymore. It's Sunday. Uh, we are in Ludlow, California. Uh, we left Barstow this morning from camping in the uh, Walmart parking lot. <laughs> uh, made it a few miles down the road and we needed to get fuel. So we stopped here at the Chevron and base unleaded is $5 a gallon. So we didn't get much of it. We just got one can full and filled up our tanks and we'll fuel again later in the day. Uh, but right across the street was the uh, Ludlow Cafe here on Route 66. And we decided, you know, let's uh, let's do a little bit of Route 66, which is going to be down this way, parallel to I-40 for a bit. Uh, and then it goes south into some mountains and uh, it should be interesting. So we're going to do a couple hundred miles of uh, Route 66 and then uh, rejoin the slab uh, heading on into Flagstaff, Arizona today and uh, let's see where the road takes us. And it's already getting hot. It's like 9 a.m. God, it's getting hot fast. <clears throat> we were discussing getting out much earlier uh, tomorrow morning, maybe before dawn. Get out about uh, 4.30 in the morning and make a couple miles before uh, the heat really sets in because, oh, it's hot out here. I'm looking at this broken down minivan here. It looks like it's got an exhaust dangling under it. And uh, that... We were talking about that at breakfast. Imagine how bad it was decades ago out here in the middle of nowhere in the heat if uh, you broke down. Man, it would just absolutely suck. It could be uh, life-threatening. Yeah, just too much heat, not enough water. No easy way to get repaired. Yeah, it would suck. yeah so uh, we got road work uh, ahead of us, so says the sign. Uh, you got derelict old uh, shacks and buildings that have gone into disrepair and abandonment over the decades. This was a fuel station, obviously. And, uh, yeah. It's amazing that all this was once, you know, these little border towns and stuff off the highway were uh, jumping. You know, so it was the only place you could get food and supplies and fuel and all that. But, now, since the uh, super slabs went in, all this stuff just dries up. There's no money, no incentive to maintain. Now, a lot of this, from what I understand, the, uh, the uh, Route 66 uh, Preservation Society, whatever they're called, I apologize, I'll put the name up here. They've worked with local governments throughout the various states that Route 66 passed through, and uh, they're trying to kind of re build sections of the old mother road, but you're going to have good sections like this we're seeing here, and it's going to turn to absolute crap. <laughs> I, I know that's going to happen. And then it's going to go through little towns, because Route 66 went through all the little towns, and uh, it kind of hopscotches all over the place, and uh, becomes other roads, and then splits back off to itself. But, yeah. Maybe one of these days I'll do a full Route 66 run uh, on a bigger bike. I don't think I'd want to do it all on the cup. It would take a while. Anyway, here's the road. 35 miles an hour. Cool. I think we'll uh, wait until it turns to crap and then we'll go to 35 miles an hour. This is the Mojave Desert. I mean, it's just barren and rugged and ugly. It's just ugly out here. But in my opinion, I don't like it. It's really nothing to look at. I cannot imagine getting stuck out here. Okay, so this is what we're looking at right now for uh, Route 66. Uh, it's well paved, very smooth. Came off of some fresh oiled gravel blacktop to uh, older blacktop, but it's still really good. And it's traveling just as well or better than the 40 would, about a mile, half a mile that way. And we've been shadowing this train for a while, but now we're just playing off. Uh, it's traveling okay. And there are zero cars out here. Seems to be a whole lot better than we are dealing with uh, 
I-40 traffic, but you know, in our life, this road is going to change quality pretty soon. We shall see. We're supposed to curve kind of down southward a little bit here and then go up through some uh, mountain passes that are 6 to 8% grade. So we're going to get stuck in third gear for a little while, but we'll be okay. At least now that we're getting toward the, I guess these are the Sierra Nevada mountains here, uh, getting into the Sierras, we'll get a little bit more scenery uh, than just the flat desert basin. Down here. Well, here's the train track. That train must not be on this track. Oh, it is. It is. We should slow down. Oh, let's slow down. Let's slow down. He's coming. <laughs> we're going to parallel the train. Maybe we can get him to honk. I gotta get my glove off and do this backpack here. He's moving pretty good. He'll catch up with us in about a minute. Don't slow down too much. Because then we won't be able to catch him. I'm coming on your left. I'm coming on your left, hands free. Uh, <laughs> hands free riding. I said don't slow down too much because then we won't be able to uh, catch up to him. He'll be hauling ass. Ah, uh, the hill's gonna be in the way now, damn it! Okay. <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny. It's all tiny. Gonna get my glove back on. So we can get him honk. Oh no, he went to a side area or something. Where is he? Oh, there he is. He's just going slow. Oh, he's going slow. This would be a great spot right in here because we can see him. He's going about 40, 35 to 40 right now. He'll be picking up steam coming down this hill. I don't think he sees us. Probably not. They might be on autopilot for all I know. Got four locomotives up front and God knows how many in the tail. Yep. Yeah, yeah, front to back, front to back. Gonna see us or not. Nope, I guess he doesn't see us. Ugh, bumps. Ugh, bumps. Yeah, this just parallels the train tracks. Don't usually see him at speed like this. At least not at parallel. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna curve away from us here. Yeah! Yeah! That's awesome. That's awesome. We're a train too. We just have one car behind us. That's it, man. Just overgrown kids. Out having fun, playing with our toys. He's got a really big toy. <laughs> That's right. He's got his uh, overgrown train set. We've got our, our little toy motorcycles. Finally, some scenery on the horizon. God. I'm tired of looking at yellow scrub brush and barren desert. Thank God for the clouds today, man. This would be just so unbelievably brutal. It'd be 30 degrees hotter than this right now if it wasn't for the cloud cover. Yesterday was just awful. Yeah. 
yeah, we just hammer down. We're probably going to run through whatever this uh, overcast is in about, you know, probably, I wouldn't say more than 100 miles usually. It's been, patterns don't last much over land, but we'll see. I am thankful for it. Yeah, we got another train going the other way. I hope those two don't kiss. Oh, let's go slow. Let's see the intersect. Oh. <laughs> hope they're on opposite tracks. Oh, I can't keep looking backwards. Oh, could have gone slow. Oh, 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 train wreck. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Ah, oh, no smash. Okay. <laughs> okay. We just passed this tree going the other direction, and we had to stop and take a look. Uh, we just met up with our buddy over there in the train again. Uh, we noticed there's a plaque or something sitting under this tree. So we turned around, came back a half mile, and we want to see what it says. Because I noticed it right away. I was like, look at this tree sitting out there all by itself. And it looked like a utility box, but it's not. It's This tree is the last fragile remnant of the town of Baghdad. Please help us to protect it by leaving it undisturbed. Okay. I won't hang a hammock off of it, and I won't take a whiz at the base of the tree. So there was a town here. Town of Baghdad. Crazy. He's honking. I don't think that's for us. That must be for a crossing. We'll get him again. Oh, we, we can't disturb the tree. It's going to turn. Oops. Oh, first gear. Whoa. Baghdad. California. Baghdad. So this was a town. You can see an intersection there. You can see a big gravel lot. It's a very small town. Ugh, ugh. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of soft gravel here. I almost came cooking in here, but I saw it <laughs> from the road. I was like, Wait, maybe I should slow down. Back down. Okay. I mean, there's just no trees out here. You got scrub brush. That's the only tree. I wonder if somebody planted that or if that was a native. Man, this traffic out here is crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, as long as there's a train track nearby, you can uh, follow that and figure out where you're going or get help. But they airdropped you out there in the middle of that shit. <laughs> oh, buddy. You better have a survival pack. You know, a lot of water. You gotta cross the Mojave Desert. Cloudy day is the best day to do it. Hopefully this cloud lasts. It's getting pretty extreme. I'm full throttle in fourth and I can't gain speed right now. I'm stuck at 45. There's another tree. Hey, you can hang a hammock right here. Looks like a couple of trees. Oh, you can make it happen. I mean, I'll be confident. Tree branches up there. Another car. Oh my god, two cars on the same road? Impossible. Impossible. It's a traffic jam. Two cars we've seen in this road in the last 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I think our buddy's picking up speed. He's going faster than he was. He was only doing about 40 earlier. He's he's doing a little better than that now. All right, everybody. So uh, welcome to a rainy day in the Mojave Desert. <laughs> We're starting to get a few little sprinkles on us, and you can see it ahead of us. Uh, waving howdy at our buddy back there in the train. Uh, you can see kind of a hazy line up ahead of us, and we think it's rain, because uh, we're getting some rain sprinkles on the visors. So, 
the driest uh, desert in the United States or in North America is uh, getting a little bit of rain today. salt or some other type of volcanic rock. Ooh, very black. I thought maybe it was piled up stuff from the road, but no, that's definitely natural. Just go ahead and go back there. Yeah. There's a big mountain of it right there, close by. It looks close. It's probably several miles. But up of igneous rock here. Gonna oh, no. quit looking at it or I'm gonna join it. Wow. Yeah it looks like a, a lava flow just kind of dumped out here sometime in the prehistoric past. It's crazy looking. And it's got like fissures and stuff growing right through the middle of it in weird spots. It's strange. Yeah, that's another one. That was Park. That's a sighting. Very interesting looking rock formations there. It, like, it's got these splits through it, like that. They you know, look like natural splits. It doesn't look like uh, man you know, you know, you know, intervened in that. You know. Okay. Something else new in the Mojave. Well, new to me. I'm new to the Mojave. Yeah, careful, careful. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Careful. Watch out for that cross traffic. Okay, so we're doing it again. We just passed something that looks too interesting to pass up. That black volcanic uh, mountain. Right as I turn the camera off, we passed this sign over here. And the sign says National Landmark something. So that's a, it's a big old pile of volcanic rock, some kind of igneous rock. Let's see what the sign says, and we're going to go visit. We're here. Might as well go see it. Amboy Crater. Crater Natural Landmark. And this is BLM land. Hey, we could camp out here. Where'd you go, man? Did I leave you? Oh, you had to wait for traffic? <laughs> Amboy Crater. Huh. Crater. So what, uh, a meteor crater, meteor impact, asteroid impact? What the F is this? So maybe that's what all this, uh, this black rock is that's scattered everywhere. It was uh, ejecta from the crater impact, or the meteor impact, whatever. Holy shamoli. Yeah, like I said, it looks close. I don't think it's close. I think that damn mountain is miles away. What do we have? Rules and regulations. I don't give a shit. No discharge of firearms. Yeah, not gonna happen. Didn't bring one this trip. No more do. Going through too many uh, blue states, gun unfriendly states where they prefer criminals to uh, prey on people. Uh, keep that politics out of the channel, huh? Um, yeah, so this is. Ooh, watch out. There's sand on the surface here. It's not, not big, but there is sand. This is quite impressive. What does this one say? Gravel, gravel, gravel. Yeah, man, this is ejecta everywhere. Amboy Crater. Okay. Formed of ash and cinders is 250 feet high. It's only 250 feet high. Uh, and 1,500 feet in diameter. Crater is one of the youngest volcanic fields. Six distinct periods of eruptions. Volcanic cinder. So why do they call it a crater? Okay. Volcanic crater. Okay. So I was thinking maybe meteor. But yeah. So that explains all this ejecta. But man, it must have been shooting that lava some kind of high to get miles out in this direction. Can you imagine what that looked like when it was erupting? Don't want to be anywhere close. 
It encompasses 24 square miles of volcanic activity started 6,000 years ago. Last period as recently as 500 years ago. Wow. Climb to the rim of the crater. Well, hell yeah, man. To see a view of the associated lava field. Oh yeah, we're doing that shit. We're doing that shit right now. Another car. God, this place is just too busy. Climb to the rim of the crater. How do we do that? We got a hike out there to it? The, yeah, the pavilion thing there looks like it's tipped over, but no, it's designed that way. Interesting. Trail to the crater. Oh, crap. No, no. Allow yourself a minimum of three hours hiking time. Located 1.1 miles from the day use area. No, I'd love to see it, but we're not going there, not unless we can get closer. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll get right back to you on that. Yeah, it's pretty impressive, though. I mean, yeah, that's further away than it looks. What, how, how's that a mile away, though? If it's only 250 feet high, it looks a hell of a lot bigger than that. ride my cub up there. I was thinking about riding along the side. I wouldn't want to get stuck in this uh, walkway and not be able to turn around. Backing it up might suck. A lot. Three hours hiking time, they said, and it's only 1.1 miles from here? That must be some rugged landscape. It's got to be super rugged, yeah. This is awesome looking. Yeah, I started seeing it from the edge of the highway, all the black stuff. I'm like, that's what looks like igneous rock. So what happened? Man, that's a, that's a big old crater. Now watch, it starts erupting today while we're here. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> one, Wabbit, one! <laughs> if we feel a ground tremor, I am bailing. Because <laughs> this ejecta, they said it's 20 miles wide. Imagine the pressure. Just put that in perspective. To shoot rock, molten lava, 20 mile circumference, holy bejesus. I mean, it would have to be firing the stuff easily, easily a couple miles into the sky, maybe further. I mean, how high does it have to go to fall 20 miles away? Wow. Imagine seeing that from orbit, from space, you know, from like the space station or something. It would definitely be visible. Oh yeah, it's humid out here. Or is it just the heat? I can't really tell. It doesn't feel all that humid, I guess. I mean, it's a dry spot, but it's hot. Holy hell. All right, let's get moving. I thought we were gonna be able to drive right up to the damn thing. Okay, off we go. We saw. Now it's time to go. Okay, everybody. Welcome back to the day in progress. Just took a, a little 30 or 45 minute uh, break. Stealth break. Uh, at a uh, closed rest stop on the side of the California Highway. They said... Uh, Rest stop, 18 miles. Okay, great. Uh, we get here. Closed. Next rest stop, 76 miles. <laughs> I don't think so. We're going to park where we want to park. We've been seeing quite a few truckers and other people stopping by here doing the same. But uh, our bikes were small enough we could slip through the barricades, and uh, that's what we did. Adrian took a nap behind the building, and I just sat around and enjoyed the shade and the rest for a few minutes. 
So we'll get out here in the fray. I-40 is getting busier. Uh, we've been seeing a very heavy stream of traffic, so yeah, it's an interstate, kind of to be expected. It was pretty quiet earlier this morning when we were on, but that was uh, before 9 a.m. Now it's uh, midday. I don't know what time it is. Let's see if I can figure it out. What time is it? What time is it? It is. Survey says 11 and 25 a.m. So yeah, it's just a little bit before midday. It hasn't gotten really hot because of the cloud cover, and we're very thankful for that. Uh, it's going to be a long day in the, the wind and the hills and all that. And with the heat added to it, it would be miserable, so this isn't bad. I'm not complaining yet. Just wait, I'll find something to complain about. Colorado River. Nice bridge. Yeah, Arizona State Line. Well, we're not stopping for that picture. <laughs> Look at the wind, man. Oh, we're just getting brutalized. Ugh. 75 mile an hour limit. Yeah, that's great. Oh, this wind is just brutal. Ah, no. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. If it wasn't so windy, I'd stop. I'll just take a screenshot of this right here from the camera. Welcome to Arizona, Grand Canyon State. Huh? Yeah, with the wind, I don't think we'd ever get accelerated back up to this hill here. Oof. Colorado River. Runs all the way down through Texas, and uh, that's what creates Lake Austin, Lake Travis, all that. Lower Colorado River Authority, LCRA. Welcome back to our uh, Sunday in progress. Back on gravel. We thought we were done with gravel for the Cannonball Run, but apparently not. Uh, we got off the, we got off of I-40 because we're fighting really strong headwinds and we're only able to maintain like 42 43 and traffic is moving real fast up there so i saw a little road that's paralleling uh i-40 and i thought well maybe that's you know route 66 i don't know so we jumped over onto that and we ran just a couple miles down that and uh, passed a sign that said rough pavement next two miles okay <laughs> it didn't say pavement ends in one mile now we're back on gravel. <laughs> so we're debating. Okay, we'll go forward because this uh, this runs into another road. Oh, Jesus, that's a washboard. Um, this runs into another road uh, in like a mile and a half, and that road leads right back over to I-40. So the decision now is tough this out or turn around and backtrack four miles to get back on the highway. So we're going to soldier forward here. It's not our first uh, rodeo with gravel on the Cubs. So we're hoping for the best. Ooh, is that my road? Uh, is that my road? Because we're thinking I-40. Yeah, I see I-40 over there. So this has got to be our road, Adrian, to the left. Where is I? Where is I? Where I is... You guys aren't looking at anything, are you? No, it looks like we keep going straight. This this parallels, yeah, we keep going straight. This doesn't go over to I-40, I don't think. If I can figure out where I am, no. Yeah, okay, it's saying turn left. Okay, let's go. Uh-oh, first gear. Deep. Deep gravel rear brake. That's right. Ugh, big rocks. Six inch diameter rocks. Uh, deep gravel. Yeah. <laughs> These cup tires hate gravel. I mentioned that. Oof. They're very narrow. They're very slick. Yeah. They just they they plow side to side. They don't like to skim over the surface, and they have no grip. I'm gonna get down to this trough right here paddle against the side. Whoa, that's, oh, oh, plow. Yeah, yeah. 
plow, plow, plow. Oh, uh, this is uh, no fun. This is really deep sand. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 you're about to eat it. <laughs> Get over to the middle. Get over to the middle. <laughs> we haven't dumped these things yet. Now watch, we'll dump them today. This is deep, dude. Yeah, look at that. You're you're cutting six inch deep ruts in this sand. This is soft stuff. <laughs> if we had knobbies, it wouldn't be so bad, but yeah, these tires are slippery. Yeah, land for sale. You want it? Come on out. We probably <laughs> didn't that isn't that demoralizing? Butterfly just uh, lapped you. <laughs> I don't know if we're going the right way, but we're going to find out. It looks like we're going the right way. And, th uh, and then this one uh, uh, jumps right over to 40. We're not done with our adventuring yet. Well, it's gotten better, but... As soon as you get cocky, things change. <laughs> we can't blame Dave for this route. <laughs> Even he was saying, yeah, I was cursing myself a little bit on that last section today. I'm talking about that last... Uh, Meteor shower road, the debris field. Good God, that was awful. Yeah, Dave, we were cussing you too. And he even said, you know, they're just looking at Google Maps and trying to find stuff that looks interesting. Well, how about looking at the grade of the road? There's got to be a site, some some public service that tells you when those roads have been last maintained because I guarantee that park road has not been maintained in decades. Somebody's gone out there and they're putting uh, those white circles, white paint circles around the uh, potholes. <laughs> if you're going to paint them, why don't you patch them? <laughs> I, love the, I love the slow dip, uh, or slow down dip or slow down uh, bump, whatever and they put it right on the bump. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks for that advance warning. Ooh, big rock. Ooh. A stop sign? What the hell? And that's new, man. That's shiny. That's too shiny, man. I don't believe it. Yeah, I'm wondering. Oh, hey, oh, 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 this is really soft. Oh, 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 oh. There's truck tire carcasses out here. How the hell do they get here? People are shredding tires out here on this? Masses. <laughs> See if I can get the trailer in action hopping around again. Yeah, these washboards are a little closer together so it doesn't cause the hopping we were getting over there in uh, the Badlands. Oh, there you go. There's a trailer tire doing its job. Jackhammer. Seems like that shock might need a little bit more damping. Hmm. The trailer tire, the trailer shock. I don't know. I can't see my trailer. I'm just looking at yours. Uh, come on. It's funny because those washboards really slow you down too it's like you've lost forward momentum completely yeah oh, 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 almost ate it front end started plowing now, 
on the GPS, this doesn't look like that far of a, uh, a run. It only looks like a couple miles, but God only knows. Oh, oh yeah, that's bad. I'm getting out of that. Okay, I turned the camera off and forgot to turn it back on when we got off of that gravel road. So we went through all that nonsense, like eight miles, six to eight miles of gravel, just to get back to the road that parallels the highway. <laughs> Man, that was not a worthwhile uh, endeavor. Uh, Adrian said that he thinks he sweated out the two liters of Gatorade that he drank already. It's hot, man. And here is a radome, a radar dome for uh, weather service. We've got a couple of these in the Texas area, right on the north side of Houston. So this is for uh, weather prediction, storm detection. And now we're back to another pilot? What the hell? We didn't do a loop, did we? Wouldn't that be dumb as shit? <laughs> oh man, if we went... If we went in a big loop, I'm going to be pissed off. Oh my God. Is it another pilot or the same pilot? It's got to be another one. Oh, that would make me mad. <laughs> 25, 30 minutes of torture just to end up right where you started. Son of a... <laughs> okay, stop sign. Oh, God damn, that's rough. Oh, oh God damn. Oh. Okay, so now back to highway, yes? Okay. Can't see diddly shatidu squat. Yeah, okay. We're going to Flagstaff, yeah. Toward Flagstaff. Towards, yes. Now this is nice road. If we could stay on this access road, it'd be great. Next service is 19 miles. Okay. Oh man. If we could travel this, this would be perfect. And this is what we saw from the highway earlier. And as soon as we got on it, it turned to a goat path. stairs. Can't ride them. I was thinking if that was a ramp, we could be hoodlums and ride over the highway. Uh, cafe, are you hungry? They're serving rocks. Motel's got vacancies. So this must be part of old Route 66 here. All this derelict stuff. Motel. The motel sign with no motel. Empty outhouse back there. Uh, this has all got to be part of the Route 66. And there's something gated off back there that looks awful important. Can't read it. Can you read it? Are you careful, anybody? Proving grass, okay. There's gravel in that intersection, watch out. My front wheel went, woo! Oh no, man. Proving grounds for what? Okay, pedal of the metal, jumping out into the fray here. And he is hauling balls, he's doing 85 plus. You with me? Okay. Well, at least we have air conditioning this way. Ugh, bump. These people are hauling ass. Well, 
check out these uh, rock formations. I mean, it looks pretty cool. When people live right down there at the base of those. I think that would be kind of flip room. Ooh. Thirty in the afternoon, and we are headed toward the Grand Canyon. And uh, we just passed over a, a ridge that said elevation 5,000 feet. So we're back up pretty high, and uh, everything has turned green. We noticed uh, no more yellow, dry, dead stuff. So apparently they've been getting enough rain out here to, to keep everything green and pretty. Look at all this. Looks so much better than uh, yellow, dead, dry California. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, we're headed to the Grand Canyon. Uh, we're about 125, 130 miles out. And uh, we're going to camp in the canyon tonight somewhere. Hopefully up along the uh, rim where we can overlook that for our uh, evening sunset. And uh, sunrise will obviously probably be behind us in the morning. But anyway, we'll rejoin you there. Okay, so we're still about hour and 45 yeah 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 so we're still about an hour 45 uh, maybe two hours out from uh, Grand Canyon Park and this is what's ahead of us so yeah we're gonna get wet <laughs> we just stopped at a an off and on back there uh, exit ramp uh, so we could garb up and put on the uh, full rain gear because we are gonna get soggy uh, I always hate putting on the rain pants. Uh, if it's just going to be a shower, I'll ride through that. But this looks like a good solid soaking. So on go the pants. And the fun part about that is whether you get rained on or not, you end up wet because <laughs> you start sweating inside of these things. Oh, goody. Anyway, I'll turn the uh, camera back on when we get into the deluge. Well, it's a good solid rain, but it's not a downpour. Yeah, it's, it's looking a little clearer 10 miles ahead, so we'll see. Hopefully it's not raining at the park. It would really suck to get up there and it's all rained up. Ooh, this is a steep one. Okay, well, we rode out of it. It was only about uh, 10 miles, 10 minutes, whatever. Long enough for me to uh, rediscover the leak in my rain pants. So now I've got swamp balls. It was just long enough for my nether regions to get wet. And uh, the, I've mentioned before, but these field shear uh, outer jackets are not 100% waterproof. They leak through pretty quickly. Uh, so my right bicep is fully wet through the riding jacket. Mm -hmm. But we'll find another stopping point up here soon and strip off the wet stuff and let it dry. Yeah, at least the under layers are dry. The wet stuff is going to stay wet because it's going to the dry bag. Okay, well Murphy is still having fun with us. Uh, we're headed into the Grand Canyon Park still about 40 miles that way and this is our second big storm and this one looks thicker and we're getting uh, lightning and thunder and uh, we're definitely going to get wet we're headed into it right now so we'll see how it goes we might get rained out for our uh, Grand Canyon visit hopefully it'll clear by tonight tomorrow whatever and we'll at least get to see some of it I was really hoping for a, a picture you know but I don't think that's going to happen. Not a, not a nice one, anyway. All right. Here we go. Oops, and I had my visor open, and it got water inside. Dopey. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to try. Yeah. I'm going to try to get up off the pavement here. 
on the pavement. Uh, bumpy. Yeah, it's coming down good. At least we've got our uh, flashers and people can see us. Oh yeah, this is a solid rainstorm. And my balls are already wet again. Wait, these pants have definitely got to be replaced. There's my crown vent, some of them dipped on inside. Oh, cold balls. <clears throat> Alright, well, I'm going to save this battery and I'll uh, update you on the carnage when we arrive. Ooh, yeah, this is a, this is a storm. Okay, everybody, I uh, should have turned the camera on during the nasty deluge that we just went through, but I was too focused on uh, not dying. Uh, <laughs> it was a full whiteout for a little bit of time there, probably about five minutes. Uh, it's coming down three, four inches an hour, very, very heavy. Uh, I had a bunch of traffic that was riding our ass, just like we do now. Um, it looks like we might have ridden out of it. Uh, you can see the thunderstorm over here to the east. Uh, there was a lot of lightning, a lot of thunder, uh, but it's looking good. Okay, everybody. Welcome to the Grand Canyon. This is something. I had no idea what to expect, but this is just absolutely stunning. Look at the, the, the this spire right here in front of me, for example. The thing just goes straight down like... 800 feet, 1,000 feet. It's crazy. I have no idea what the depth is down there. They probably got a... They got information here everywhere. Let's see what this says. And we're here just at the right time of night, too. We're not going to see uh, much of it when this storm rolls in. <laughs> this is amazing. And uh, you got to watch this first step. I can't believe it's not gated up or anything. I'm not going to be overly adventurous, but holy bejesus Oh, yeah. <laughs> Watch that first step. 200 feet, 300 feet, 1,000 feet. <laughs> oh, crap. I'm not afraid of heights, but uh, this is... Uh, mm -hmm. No, thanks. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, I'm getting back in by behind the rocks here. This is nuts. Oh my god. It never gets cold. <laughs> That's what my buddy just said. He's been here several times and he just came over here and went, Wow. <laughs> this is something. And you can literally walk right out here and hang your feet off the edge. I don't want to get in their picture. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at these girls just hanging their feet off the ledge over here taking pictures. You know, every year there are people that... People that fall, I can imagine. Getting a little too brave, yeah. Wow, let's look at this. Who? Okay. Here we go. Look at this. This is amazing. I wonder if we got good coverage here. I'll uh, give my wife a call and let her see the Grand Canyon. Wow. Yeah, so. That's crazy. What I was telling you, if you're a glutton for punishment, you can climb down and climb back. Nope. Nope. No thanks. Wow. Okay, I'm going to shut the video down and give wifey a call. Take some pictures before the sun sets too much.